All, right, all of your um, albums have gone gold, most of which have gone platinum. What do you spend all your money on? Mm, a lot of times the wrong stuff. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, initially I got into car. I had like 15 cars. When the IRS did this big crazy investigation, I mean, they thought I had 30. <laughs> kind of all the ones from way back in 88 to date. But uh, now, you know, I'm into cars and stuff. But now I'm trying to get into spreading out. Because the entertainment business, there's so much kiss ass going on that you kind of got to spread out, spread your wealth. Do any once you got some other things solid, right. you don't have to kiss ass no more. You can <laughs> say what you really feel. Do you collect things like guns or anything? Oh, I'm into guns, yeah. I got HK93, Desert Eagle Chrome. I got, you know, Mac 11s, Mac 10s, 9mm Glocks, Browning 92. Ooh, life in Washington must be great. Yeah, it is. <laughs> in fact, but it is way, I don't worry about skinheads and sheets and shit. <laughs> put it that way. Well, you know, we have a tape about the lifestyle Imagine that you did that a few years ago. Late at night, sheep running across your yard. How you gonna miss? <laughs> I, Where is Bob? Bob? I want my cut too. Thirty-three percent, like lawyers do it, will be good. Maybe he'll give you a job at Playboy. Yeah, this is the video. Like he came up and shot. Life, just the way I live at home. Yeah. Lifestyle of Sir Mixlot. Let's check it out. Hey. Daddy. Got a big snake, all you gotta do is make a dance, you know what I'm saying? And check this out, I know y'all wonder, who the fuck is Sir Mix a lot? Well, let me tell you about it. 1988, I dropped my first single, Posse on Broadway. Y'all paid me small, like this, like a poop butt. But you know what happened? One million records got sold. Where was y'all at? One million got sold. Second single, you guys probably said, Flash in the Pan. He's out, that's it, he's through. Posse, one single. You know what? 700,000. But them. guess what? My label forgot to renew the contract. So we called the Bunny Rabbit, WB, Warner Brothers. Yeah. I'm in the house. Let's get on up to five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten million records. And let's take that boy with that airplane out. Peace. In case you motherfuckers think you made a bad investment. Huh? How many rappers you got with this shit right here? Platinum, motherfucker. This is not gold. This is platinum. The real deal. Certified. Sorry. Anybody in weed that don't believe it, fire them motherfuckers. They should have to go. 850i. This is the dopest motherfucking BMW made. 12 cylinders. Six speeds. I got a Porsche I just finished. I got a Lamborghini Diablo. 4,500 square feet. 13 acres. You guys are probably saying, this is an egotistical motherfucker, man. All you think about is how much shit he got. Goddamn right. Rap music. You guys ain't paying me to be bashful, right? We go this way. We go fishing out here. We got some bluegill out here, some catfish. Man, I know y'all probably looking at it like this ain't this ain't what we expect most rappers to do. But hey, I got to chill somehow. Everybody got their way of chilling. This is my way of chilling. Everything's monitored. Believe me, ain't nobody rolling up in here. And I don't mean acting irresponsibly with them. And I'm not trying to sound like the NRA either. But I do like cats. If you step to my back, you get popped. I don't play. Check this out. This is fly James Bond shit. 44 mag. Clint Eastwood never, never could mess with this. I'm gonna bring this shit on stage, man. Ah! It's a little deuce deuce, man, that my lady uses around here in case somebody try to roll her up. This is like essential gang equipment for some reason. You know, they, they feel like they gotta have these to let off. They owe like 30 rounds in a clip. This is what uh, everybody's trying to ban, you know. And this is what I'm what I'm tripping off of because if you ban guns, I know because they've saved my life before. If you ban guns, there's nobody left with gats but criminals, right? Then I just have to be a criminal because I'm going home, mine. And my baby, the sweetheart, the boss of all bosses, HK93, with the loaded metal jacket. You ever watch that shit on like uh, PBS when they show the clan? Like getting ready for a big ass rally and they have like a target. They have a target of a black dude, right? They have a target of a black dude, like sitting across the lake somewhere, and they be like, God damn it. Now I want you all to take that goddamn AR 15 and I want you to shoot that goddamn target like he was a goddamn coon. I ain't bullshitting. I never liked a goddamn nigger in all my goddamn life. Fuck the Ku Klux Klan. Peace. This is the room of noise, the room of doom. Then we did the Posse on Broadway video. That was when it became business. We had about 150,000 records, so you know nobody was rich, but we were eating finally. And then Posse took off, man, and just like it played. They played on MTV probably three times, and that was it. 
And BET probably played it three times, and bingo. We had no clout, and we still sold a million records basically on one song. Independent label, one song. We sold a mi over a million records. You know, with one song, and MTV would tell us, you know, fuck you. But they had to play it because the kids liked it. And I'm like, damn, if you combine that kind of bullshit with Warner Brothers, it's like, wow. There it is. The problem, you know, with most rappers is, man, you can't do nothing with them on pop radio. When you do interviews with them on pop radio, they don't know what the fuck they talking about. You know what I'm saying? And, Yo, you know, we got this cut and shit we just dropped. And it's, you know, fuck all that. You know, I'm, some I'm, I'm sellable. Black people aren't the only people that, as a matter of fact, I think white people buy more rap than black people. And if you think I'm lying, you ask MC Hammer. When we start thinking that uh, we have to make songs to satisfy a white buyer, I think we start underestimating the intelligence of white rap record buyers. You go, well, he, 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 he has positive lyrics. I don't think that's what it's all about. Because you can come up with positive lyrics and nobody will listen to you. Who the fuck you think's listening to Nancy Reagan? Not no kids in the, in the hood. If I let Maharaji come up and say, hey, I've been there and I'm telling you what's there. That's how you sell it. That's how you knock it on the kids. And you can do that with four-letter words, but then how do you push it to the kids, right? Now, how the, how the fuck they gonna hear it? You gotta say it without the four-letter words. The radio plays it. The kids hear it. The kids go out and buy it. Boom, educate the community. We're gonna drop the album around January. Yep. Probably drop it around January. And we're gonna follow that probably a week later with a single called Baby Got Back, which is Rick's, that's Rick's favorite song, which is funny, man, because I see some of them girls Rick be with, no but. No. <laughs> I like big butts and I cannot lie. You other brothers can't deny. Now when a girl walks in with an itty bitty waist and a round thing in your face, you get sprung. Wanna pull up tough, cause you notice that butt was stuck. But I'm tired of what Cosmo and quote unquote white America says beautiful is. I, I really don't like bony girls with long ass legs and big ass knees. You see, it hurts. Yeah, I don't need no knock knee free. Because what I'm into, at least in the hood, what we like is big booties. You'll see the camera with big booties. You know what I'm saying? Remember women in the 40s like this? Valentine's. Hourglass. Yeah, big, big hourglass. Like my boy said, big Valentine shaped ass. Hard ass. That's what we talk about. We talk about what a black man. Man, I'd be a beautiful man.